Hi, my name is Wes Overton, and today we are going to look at using the Desmos graphing calculator to create mathematical models. Now the lesson I'm looking at, this data comes from an Algebra 1 lesson called Population Predictions from Illustrative Mathematics, and you can use really any type of data. So what I've done, I've already typed this data into a table, but if you go to desmos.com forward slash calculator, and are on the graphing calculator. Anytime you want a table, there's a couple ways you can do that. You can go to the plus sign and hit table. If you are on a computer, you can simply type in table and a table shows up. I've already typed in this data uh, for time's sake. So here we have the population of Paris. I believe in this case, year zero is 1950. And this will be the x-axis is years after 1950. And then so what I can do is if I click this, this can turn the data on and off. Now, you'll notice when I turn it on, it does not show up on my screen. So Desmos has a built-in zoom feature, which is real handy, that zoom fit. So when you type in a table, you type in data, this shows up. So I can click that, and then I, then I have a zoom where I can see my data. Now, this particular table is labeled x sub 1, y sub 1. If I add another table, I can change that subscript because I'm dealing with different data. So if I want to build a model for this, I can hit plus sign. I'm going to add expression. You really type in the form of the model you want to build. So if I want to do a linear model, I'm going to make it look like y equals mx plus b the slope intercept form of equation. Now a couple things are going to be different. Instead of y, I need to base my data off y1. So if I just type in y and then 1, a subscript automatically appears so this data is being based off y1. And then instead of typing equals, we're going to do a tilde. For most people that is above your tab button, you hit shift and the button above the tab. And then we're going to type in M. Instead of X, we're simply going to type in X1 because we're basing the data off the data from this table. And I'm going to go plus B. And I could use AX1 plus B if I wanted to as well uh, for statistics. So this shows up. Here are my parameters right here. So that would be the slope of my line of best fit. This would be my Y intercept. Here would be my correlation coefficient. And then also, I have the option, if I would like, to plot the residuals. So what's going to happen on those residuals is they're going to show up on the x-axis. So a couple ways. If I turn this off, I could go zoom fit again. And here are my residuals right there. So if I want to go back to my original data, I can turn the residuals off, go back to my data, and type that in right there. Now, if... I want to do an exponential model. I could add another expression. Now instead of oops, instead of doing a linear equation, I'm going to do an exponential equation. You know, of course, using x1 and y1. And then I need different parameters here, a and b, and that would be my exponential model. And I can turn that on and off there as well and it gives me my parameters. Uh, if I want to do quadratic, I could do quadratic. So I could type in, you know, it's nice, you can type it in standard form. So bx1 plus c. And there it builds a quadratic model. Uh, I could do it in, oops, vertex form if I would like. So I could go x1 minus h squared plus k. And it gives me all those parameters. So whichever form, you would like, you can type that in, and that is how you build a model based off the data you have. And if you want a different table, you simply change the x1, y1. So if this was Austin, this table is based off x2 and y2. So I'm going to turn this data off. I can turn this table on. I can hit my zoom fit. And then I can type in my equation there, like here. I see a curve, so I might be thinking this could be modeled 
with an exponential. And I'm, I'm doing a couple keyboard shortcuts, like I hit Shift 8 for multiplication. And then when I do my exponent, that is going to be Shift 6. And that is going to do my exponent uh, for my exponential model. So I can see the exponential model fits pretty good. And there are my parameters. So that is how we can use Desmos to model mathematical data.